way. Uh, so we have the last session for today. And our speaker is Professor Vasilis Karakostas. And his talk is Contemporary Scientific Perspectivism. Thank you, Marshall. Well, first of all, to wish a good start uh, to other students uh, of the new uh, master program in contemporary philosophy, philosophy of science. Uh, and of course, thanking our chair, Antoni Katsimoise, for organizing this uh, conference and also extending my thanks to Stavros Ioannidis for all the arrangements he has made. The talk is divided in two main parts. Given that there is no a unique position of perspectives, in the first part, I provide the conceptual, philosophical framework of scientific perspectivism according to the norms of the proposed approach. And in the second part, I produce a perspectivist contextual account of truth that is pertinent to the propositional structure of quantum mechanics, but also entirely appropriate to ordinary discourse. I will analyze the philosophical implications of the resulting account of truth, arguing also that contemporary quantum theory is strongly perspectival in character. Scientific perspectivism, as commonly perceived in general philosophy of science, occupies a middle ground between the extremes of the context free reversals of metaphysical realism, the rigid reductive methodology favored by positivist considerations of science, and the inherent relativism entailed by certain sociological accounts of science. In our approach, scientific perspectivism amply recognizes the existence of a mind-independent world as being logically prior to experience and knowledge. It emphasizes, however, that scientific knowledge of the world can never be pure, direct, or unmediated, since it requires prior conceptualization or structural organization. It requires the adoption of a perspective. For scientific knowledge, independence of four perspectives is beyond the human condition. It is simply unattainable. For perspectivism, the separation between the knowing subject and the object to be known, the partition between the observer and the observed required for an objective description of phenomena is neither absolute nor Catholic as Cartesian-like epistemological approaches advocate, thus promoting an allegedly context-free account of the world. The subject-object partition in a perspectivist framework is accomplished upon the condition of the adopted perspective. Consequently, scientific observation is considered as perspective in the sense that claims about what is observed cannot be completely detached in all circumstances from the context of observation. The significance of this point is particularly pertinent to quantum theory 
due to the existence of incompatible physical quantities concerning one and the same system, one and the same quantum system. Measurement contexts of such quantities, namely incompatible quantities, are mutually exclusive in quantum mechanics. They cannot be held simultaneously. Therefore, each mode of observation of incompatible quantum quantities gives rise to a particular kind of representation or description of the system which either representations or descriptions cannot be unified in a single framework by the theory. In this respect, a context-free and interpretation-free access to reality as such is merely an illusion. The book of nature, according to the well-known expression, proves too subtle and complex to be determined by just reading of reality. In general philosophy of science, the usual sense attributed to the notion of perspective refers to knowledge claims and actual practices of scientific communities either within the same historical period characterizing the synchronic version of perspectivism or in different historical periods in which those scientific practices belong, characterizing the so-called diachronic version of perspectivism. In this respect, it is legitimate to say that knowledge is historically and culturally situated. In our approach, scientific perspectivism is not understood simply as a means for assessing or evaluating alternative modeling practices or research programs which may give rise to perspectival knowledge. In our approach, scientific perspectivism is primarily viewed as a methodological framework of how we obtain and form scientific knowledge of nature through a broadly perspectivist process constituting arguably an indispensable part in theory building, in theory construction. In this methodological framework, the notion of perspective is theorized in relation to its previous conventional meaning and is conceived as the primary variable of tracing and investigating the world. It is perceived as the principal unit of probing the world. A perspective <coughs> is characterized in this approach endotheoretically, namely within a specific discipline, a specific theory. Is characterized by a set of variables that are used to describe systems or to partition objects into parts which together give a systematic account of a domain of phenomena. The choice to adopt a particular perspective signifies also the approval of a conceptual scheme on the basis of which one may isolate which of the many available properties do and which do not count for the purposes of description. Since the world does not count with one preferred system of description. 
Consequently, scientific perspectivism disassociates itself from the semantic dimension of traditional realism, which incorporates a radically non-epistemic conception of truth, according to which the truth or falsity of a proposition is entirely dependent of any human cognitive activity, conceptual skills, scientific theories, and so on. Therefore, in this view, the truth makers of propositions, namely facts or actual states of affairs, are totally independent of human conceptualization. They are considered as being completely autonomous in themselves or as residing the world purely extensionally, that is, in a manner independent of our worldviews, in particular, discussing practices and contexts. No doubt, the view of a radically non epistemic conception of truth incorporates the following transcendence condition according to which any proposition possesses a determinate truth value independently of any empirical evidence or cognitive means by which we may establish which value it is. As a result, every proposition is either determinately true or determinately false entirely independently of our possible knowledge of it or its evidential basis. In other words, it is empirically totally <coughs> unconstrained. It is important to realize that this metaphysical thesis of truth does not simply aim to establish an objective basis or attribute a non-epistemic character to the notion of truth, but for instance, the content of declarative propositions is rendered true or false on the basis of worldly conditions, of conditions of the world, and not on some relevant beliefs of others. But this particular conception is so radically non epistemic that at the end leads to a notion of truth with absolutely no epistemic features, even when applied to scientific empirical discourse. In the sequel, I will argue that the semantics underlying the propositional structure of thought mechanics is incompatible with such a traditional conception of truth. In other words, it is falsified by a fundamental physical theory and its logical structure. Generally speaking, the logic of physical theory reflects the structure of the propositions referring to the behavior of a physical system in the domain of the relevant theory. In quantum theory, propositions are represented by projection operators on the Hilbert space of a system. The important thing is that the collection of four atomic quantum propositions form a non Boolean logical structure which violates both the distributivity law of classical logic 
and also the principle of bivalence. Specifically, the violation of the distributivity law <coughs> implies the existence of incompatible propositions in the universe of discourse. It is no longer possible the co-joint assignment of truth values to all propositions pertaining to a quantum system. The violation of the bivalence principle implies that it is no longer possible to regard a priori any proposition as being either true or false. Hmm? Consequently, due to the inherently probabilistic character of the underlying logic of quantum theory, in any physically significant circumstance, propositions are taken as semantically undecidable or semantically indeterminate. To give you an example, for instance, for any physical quantity A, I'm repeating, for any physical quantity A of a quantum system in a superimposed state psi of eigenstates of A and any proposition P concerning the physical quantity A, it is not true that either P holds or its negation holds. In other words, the truth value of the proposition P is objectively indeterminate and not simply unknown. In fact, as shown by the celebrated Hawking Specter theorem, for any quantum system associated to a Hilbert space of dimension higher than two. So it includes every possible quantum system except certain trivialities. So for any quantum system associated with Hilbert space of dimension higher than two, there does not exist a two-valued truth functional assignment on the lattice of quantum propositions. In other words, the gist of the cohen specter theorem, when interpreted semantically, asserts the impossibility of assigning definite truth values, yes or no, true or false. Among the impossibility of assigning definite truth values to all propositions pertaining to a quantum system at any one time for any of its quantum states without generating a contradiction. It should be noted, however, that although the Cohen Specter theorem forbids a global absolute assignment of truth values to quantum propositions, it does not exclude ones that are contextual or equivalently perspective dependent. In this connection, we introduce the notion of a context of reference and hence the notion of a perspective in quantum mechanics that is mathematically represented by a complete set of commuting quantum observables. In this respect, a perspective in quantum mechanics constitutes the maximal possible structure through which reliable information can be consistently 
so as to avoid contradictions can be consistently extracted from an arbitrary pattern system. Realize this by means of a generalized example. If A, B, and C denote physical quantities of the same quantum system, so that the corresponding protection operator A commutes with operators B and C, not however the operators B and C with each other, please forget the technicality and concentrate on the result. Then, the result of a measurement of quantity A depends on whether the system has previously been subjected to a measurement of the quantity B or a measurement of the quantity C or in none of them. So, the value of the quantity A depends upon the set of mutually commuting quantities one may consider it with. That is, the value of A depends upon the selected context of measurements. In other words, the value of the quantity A cannot be thought of as in classical physics or in common life, cannot be thought of as prefixed. The value of the quantity A cannot be considered as being independent of the perspective, in this respect, the experimental context actually chosen. This is a unique feature in the whole of physics. In view of this concise analysis, I'm proposing the following perspectivist contextual account of truth, according to which the proposition P in context C is true if and only if there is a state of affairs X such that firstly, the proposition P expresses X in context C, and secondly, the state of affairs X obtains. It is a correspondence scheme, although of a contextual or perspectivist nature, where C denotes in general the context of the scores, and specifically relation about mechanical considerations, it designates the perspective or the local context of reference, namely the experimental context linked to the proposition P under consideration. The proposed account of truth is for principal reasons as dictated by quantum theory of a contextual nature. The specification of the context is part and parcel of the truth conditions that should obtain for a proposition in order the latter to be invested with a determinate or by its unknown truth point. Otherwise, the quantum proposition is in general semantically undecidable, semantically indeterminate. Put it in other words, the specification of the context, the determination of a perspective provides the necessary conditions whereby bivalent assignment of truth values quantum propositions is in principle applicable. In addition, the proposed account of truth remedies inherent weaknesses of the traditional correspondence theory of truth. The truth may 
treating or a spotless relationship is now established not in terms of our own unconceptualized reality as considered by the traditional scheme, but is established between a well-defined portion of reality as carved out by the specification of an experimental context, namely a perspective context, and the propositional content that refers to the selected context. Any quantum event that happens is raised at the empirical level only in conjunction with the specification of an experimental context that conforms to a set of quantities co-mesurable by that context. In the quantum description, therefore, the specification of the context forms a precondition of quantum physical experience, which is necessary if quantum mechanics is to grasp empirical reality at all. The proposed account of truth also conforms to a realist conception of truth, not, however, of the traditional kind, to a realist conception of truth that is compatible with contemporary fundamental physics. The interdependence of propositional contents in a referential context applied by the perspectivist proposed account of truth does not lead to the relativity of truth. For given the specification of a perspective, or the determination of a context of reference, the attribution of truth values to propositions does not depend upon the epistemic system of any user's cognizance. It is an objective fact of the matter, reported experimentally. Anyone agrees upon that? Importantly, the traditional conception of correspondence truth can be viewed as a special or limited case of the more generic aletheic scheme of perspectivist contextual correspondence when the non-explicit specification of a context of discourse causes no further consequences or further in other words, in straight fair in straight uh, form, uh, circumstances, correspondence theory of truth is part of this scheme. For instance, if you go back, if you if you hide the parameter C, the context C, the traditional scheme of correspondence truth is a cup. Hmm? The proposed account of truth essentially denies that there can be a God's eye view or an Archimedean absolute standpoint from which to evaluate logically the totality of facts of nature. In the quantum domain of inquiry, it would be vain, in other words, theoretically impossible, to search for an overall frame by virtue of which one may utter this or that really is independently of a particular context of reference. By virtue of the quantum spectrum theorem, there are no in general within a quantum mechanical discourse determinately true or determinately
can enforce propositions independent of the appeal to our context, independently of the determination of our perspective. Truth makers of quantum mechanical propositions, namely facts or actual states of affairs, are not predetermined, are not prefixed as in classical physics, the whole of classical physics. They are not out there wholly and distinctly. And concluding, in contrast, therefore, to an immutable and panoptical view from nowhere of the classical paradigm, quantum theory acknowledges in an essential, fundamental way the perspectivist contextual character of knowledge. Thank you for your attention. a continuation of your you know, work over many years. I've got a, uh, one question. I think uh, everything hinges upon you know, this notion of a context. But, that, but you are saying something about the context of discourse. So a discourse, yeah, there are you know, many. So, so could you say more? Well, uh, uh, as I said uh, right at the beginning, that this perspectivist contextual scheme of truth, it is certainly pertinent for the proposition of the logical structure of quantum mechanics, but also it is entirely appropriate for attributing truth values uh, 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 in our ordinary uh, uh, communication with, with, uh, uh, with each other. So it is entirely appropriate to, to ordinary, everyday uh, discourse. Uh, an infinite number of contexts there are also in the context of quantum mechanics. Uh, it is a technical issue, but uh, it is valid in a literal way. There, are, uh, there is an infinite number of, uh, of, uh, uh, of, of contexts. Just to say, uh, if I go back to this, right, saying at the bottom that a perspective in quantum mechanics constitutes the maximal possible structure for quantum algebra of observables through which reliable information can be consistently extracted. That maximal possible structure, which is technically a complete set of commuting quantum observables, can only be defined locally, not globally in terms of the whole framework of the theory which is characterized by a non-Boolean logical structure, right? And uh, there are as many possible contexts regarding a quantum system as physical magnitudes that are characterizing the system, right? But these are, uh, these are technical issues if one wants to, uh, to give a uh, 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 explanation, uh, a far explanation. Uh. Yes, um, thank you very much. So I'm, um, uh, I, have, I, I have not yet completely understood. Um, yes, <laughs> of course it's about your community. I'm not, I don't think I have fully understood first how this is uh, tenable as a theory of truth, but also I have not yet fully understood how it solves the problem. The, the first thing is, it se this seems to me to imply that there are no unexpressed truths. And that takes many different 
it says it is a, a, a necessary condition for something to be true that it is expressed in something in, in some context. Yeah. So, uh, but in our everyday use of the concept of truth is different. Yeah? I can say there is a true answer to the question of how many trees there are in Finland. And most people would agree, yeah, there's a true answer to the question, even if the true answer is never expressed. There's a true answer to the question of what I had for breakfast on January 1st, 1978. Um, so, it, I mean, the, it seems to me that the theory uh, takes us away, quite far away from an everyday concept. And the second question is, how exactly does it solve the problem of indeterminate uh, propositions in quantum mechanics? I mean, um, is it then that such propositions are not expressible, or that they ex do not express state of affairs, or that, I mean, what, what, what's it with these? What, what happens when you put, when you take P to, when you, you, when you substitute a, so one of these inexpressible, indeterminate, objectively indeterminate um, uh, um, uh, propositions for P. Right. Um, maybe I was yeah. I didn't catch that. Right. Uh, it is certainly an account of truth. Uh, we have shown that it satisfies Tarkis, Tarkis material condition. Uh, the proof is trivial, but it is uh, by proof. Uh, 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 an account of truth. Uh, this is uh, this is certain. Uh, your second point, uh, although all of your examples were coming from everyday uh, language, but to answer your, uh, your last point, uh, if I could, in the simplest possible manner, uh, think somehow abstractly of the global, the overall framework of, let me put it that way, every quantum system, every quantum system is followed by a logical structure, right? That logical structure is of a non-Boolean kind non boolean all right? non booleanity means uh, it takes the violation of the distributivity law and also the violation of uh, the bivalence principle. So no proposition can be regarded a priori as being either true or not. If there is there a set, a set, either it is or it isn't, right? And this is part of the bivalent principle of the classical logic. Uh, this is not valid in the overall framework of quantum theory, which is characterized by a uh, non Boolean uh, 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 star uh, by a non Boolean, uh, by a non Boolean logic. To put it simply, introducing, introducing the context C is to take a sector of the whole non-Boolean structure to take as a sector a Boolean part. This is what technically uh, uh, happens. It is extremely complicated, but it can be uh, proven, uh, it can be shown in a very strict manner. Uh, this is the functioning of the context C. It reduces the over non Boolean logical structure just to a Boolean sector of it. And uh, for that manner, any proposition in quantum mechanics should be followed by a context. Otherwise, it receives no truth fine. Right? 
uh, talk has been made about uh, subjects. About Sub subjects. 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 So my question is: um, Is your um, construal of context hanging or uh, always dependent on uh, a subject? Is context subject dependent? Subject meaning uh, human yeah. subjects. Uh, uh, or an agent subject. Right. An epistemic. An, a, right. an, an agent, agent which has an epistemic correlation. Right. right. Uh, the correlation is that it is the subject or the known subject or the agent who. Uh, specifies the kinds of the question that is put to nature. Right? Uh, this is the operation of uh, the human subject. Apart from that, and as I said, given the specification of the context, then the attribution of truth values to uh, propositions do not depend on the epistemic system of the subject, of the user. Or to put it in another way, any user would agree on the experimental results because the experimental result is the truth maker, it is the fact. All right? Because the functioning, the functioning of the human subject, of the known subject, of an agent uh, in this uh, 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 in this context, and more generally within uh, within contemporary physics, is uh, to specify to specify the kind of question that is put to nature. And no. she or she is free to do that, right? Okay, yes. Uh, my question is, does the respectable approach to quantum mechanics, as you described it, in contrast to a more traditional the realist approach, presupposes that quantum theory is in of itself complete? Basically, does it require that we abandon all interpretations that contain hidden variables? Well, in relation to, uh, to the last point, uh, in my mind, it's um, adamant about this. Uh, I don't regard the so-called hidden variables approaches as being fruitful, either to physics or uh, or general research. Uh, uh, there may be. Uh, helpful in providing uh, a picturesque like uh, framework of quantum theory uh, but uh, on the whole uh, uh, I do not regard them as being uh, fruitful either in relation to physics or in relation to philosophy. After all uh, they face uh, very serious problems in terms of the physics. For instance, uh, they cannot be in a substantial manner uh, relativistically generalized and this is the end mark. trying to understand the difference between perspectivism and the, its opponents, a traditional correspondence to truth. And it seemed to be that the, one of the things you really placed importance on was that there's this context dependence um, to the uh, truth values to get from a sentence to a determinate proposition or to get from an indeterminate proposition to a determinate one in the, on, on the perspectivist view. But of course you get that in all sorts of other s sentences, you know, like it's, it's hot here, 
that depends on the location, or I'm tall, that depends on the speaker. So when you fill in context, you get uh, the sentence takes you, you get from a sentence to a proposition with a determinate truth value. So I'm trying to, so I want to understand a bit more about what it takes to be a perspectivist other than just the truth depends on context. In relation to the truth, it is that, uh, and it is a lot. Uh, so it is truth dependent upon a context, upon a perspective, and the relation to quantum mechanics in a, in a necessary manner. Uh, okay, but you can make the point with just simple indexicals like he or I or he or she. Well, as 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 uh, as I said, but well, indexicals um, uh, do not that they must be uh, extremely uh, interesting. Or, uh, uh, but as I said, uh, uh, this account of truth. Uh, can uh, certainly be uh, applied to, uh, to everyday language, uh, to uh, a sort of uh, everyday propositions which uh, uh, may be uh, indeterminate or uh, uh, being dependent upon a context. For instance, propositions in relation to texts, right? Uh, these are common examples in, uh, in philosophy of, uh, of language. Uh, but this is that. It is a scheme arising out of the logical structure of fundamental physics. This is what I regard as being uh, important. Uh, <coughs> yes? Uh, thank you very much for your uh, talk, first of all. Um, I think I can understand how perspectivism can deal with uh, realism terms that uh, it follows, uh, it supports that there is, of course, a reality outside contexts, but uh, at the same time, it avoids the traditional approach of a God's eye perspective and all that. I want to ask about the, the other side of relativism. You mentioned it in a slide. Uh, if you can elaborate more, a bit more on how given that it's a context theory, um, how, it, how perspectivism, how perspectivism uh, manages to not get trapped into relativism of truth? Mm. Uh, in, uh, in a truly uh, relativistic uh, theory or scheme of truth, uh, truth may be even relative to a subject, right? Uh, whereas uh, in this uh, context, uh, given the determination of a context, then the attribution of truth uh, value is, is a matter of fact, is an objective fact. Any user agrees on that. That fact, that recorded fact, is not relativized upon the cognizance of the A or B or C uh, uh, user or observer. Right? So it is truth relation to, but it is not uh, a, a, a relative truth. Uh, this is certain. After all, any contextual scheme uh, incorporates, incorporates the notion of being relative to something, and this is relative to a context. Uh, thank you. Um, <laughs> I'm tempted to ask a follow-up on that, but I'll, I'll stick with my original question. Um, does this presuppose a closed or open uh, uh, state of affairs, if you would like, uh, does the fact that there can be local truths uh, that are determined uh, in any way relate to having a or an absence of 
total closure. Uh, well, uh, I myself wouldn't use the term local truth. Uh, this distinction is, of course, I use the expression uh, 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 local, uh, local context. Uh, as I had to, uh, because this is again dictated uh, 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 by the physical theory, uh, by quantum mechanics. Uh, since the global logical structure of the theory is non Boolean within a non Boolean world, uh, any proposition is semantically uh, indeterminate. It's not for practical reasons, right? It is not that I do not know or I'm not certain that it is uh, uh, within a non Boolean world, any proposition is semantically determined in an objective manner, right? In an objective manner. And also, a non Boolean uh, world uh, is not uh, uh, perceivable, right? Uh, so the locality, the locality uh, has to do with the definition of a context which can only be defined locally determining a Boolean sector of the overall non-Boolean logical structure. This is the relation between local and global in this context. I wouldn't use myself the expressions local truth, global truth. It's not related to that. Thank you, I stand corrected, but with regards to the openness and closeness of the total system, is that something that you could comment on? Uh, open or closed system is uh, a physical terminology, and it is not related to that. Uh, an open system, just to give also uh, uh, an open system is a system which exchanges information with the environment, whereas a closed system is an isolated system. Right? Any other questions? I, I also have, uh, if I may, uh, a question. Uh, you mentioned in the beginning that. Uh, what holds for quantum mechanics uh, falsifies a philosophical account of truth uh, or something to that effect, no? Because uh, my question is how can a physical theory um, falsify a philosophical account? Wouldn't it be uh, more correct to say that it may hold for this physical theory and not be related to a philosophical theory. Physical theories are powerful. Uh, yeah, many, <laughs> many, many words uh, to, give, to give an example. For instance, uh, there is, uh, for ancient times until uh, uh, recently, uh, the philosophical, uh, within the Thomas dogma, uh, in a well known position. Uh, regarding the part whole relationship, right? But the whole is the sum of its parts and its relations, right? This is strongly violated by quantum mechanics. So this philosophical principle, this philosophical common position link, uh, is, is falsified by fundamental uh, physical theory. So it is no longer regarded as being true in its entirety. This doesn't mean that it's not expected within certain... Yeah, but then doesn't perspectivism hold it here? I mean, to say that uh, the context of quantum mechanics, in the context of quantum mechanics, this is true, but you cannot extend this 
outside this context. Well, this is what I said uh, uh, using uh, a different wording, that uh, uh, to the degree, coming again back to the part of the relationship, to the degree that is violated by a fundamental theory, it can no longer be regarded as a universal truth. But of course, in, uh, in everyday uh, phenomena or in an everyday uh, talk uh, survey. Uh, so let us uh, thank you. <laughs>